Digital Digest. I'm Will. Well, we're very lucky today. We've been welcomed back to the Henry Ford to Firestone Farm on Greenfield Village. And Steve Opp, the manager here, has joined me. And today, we're going to have a discussion about sheep and one particular breed, in fact. Well, who are we going to talk about today, Steve? We're actually going to talk about the Merino sheep. Because I think you're going to tell me that those Merino sheep look a little different in the 19th century, whether 1880s like you guys portray or 1860s like we talk about than the Merino we know today. That is correct. The Merino sheep have a lot of wrinkles in it. As, well, they're kind of far back now, but they have a lot of wrinkles in them. And that was so they had more skin surface so you could produce more wool. So the more wool you produce, the more money you made. So the main uh, commodity off of a merino sheep isn't its meat. It is not its meat, it is its wool. Merino sheep have the softest, finest wool of any other breed of sheep. So I don't like wool. Wool scratches me in my uniform. Talk to me about how merino is different than maybe some other wool. It's because they have such a nice long staple that has a lot of crimps in it. All right, well, let me stop you there. You used a word that we should learn. What's the crimp in wool? The crimp is actually what is holding the wool together, and it's a very fine crimp that you can see in the wool itself before it's processed. Great. Well, that's what a 19th century farmer might know. Let's take it forward to today. What are we looking at with modern technology? With modern technology, we are able to test the microns of the wool, and that is the diameter of each individual strand of wool. And a merino sheep should have anywhere between 10 and 20 microns. And when I was handling the sheep before we started shooting today, I noticed that the wool is very greasy. What's that? It has an excess lanolin supply, and if you are allergic to the picky common wool, you can wear merino wool. and oh. not have a problem with it. Great. Well, let me back you up a second. You said a word I know, but I grew up on a sheep farm. Lanolin. Lanolin. Lanolin is an oil that the merinos produce naturally. All sheep produce it, but the merinos have an excess of it. So a lot of times when you see a merino, when we're shearing in fact, and you saw all that down between their legs, that wasn't manure. That was lanolin deposits. Great. And what does that do to your skin? Makes it very soft. In fact, we wish that we could shear sheep after we do wheat harvest so our bloody stubby fingers can get the lanolin in it and, and repair its cells because well. it is a very, very good uh, lotion. But that's not to be. When are these sheep going to have their wool harvested off of them? Once a year. So every year in the spring. Great. And you're looking for what when you shear a sheep? We're looking for the staple to be at least a two inch staple in that year and we would like it to come off in one piece. Okay, and again, a term that I know, let's help everybody at home. What's the staple? The staple is the fleece as you're taking it off and the length of it. Okay, so the how long that particular piece of fiber is. Correct. Well, Steve, talk to me a little bit about wool and the different grades of it during the Civil War. During the Civil War, it actually didn't really make a difference. But before that and after that, the virgin merino wool was from the yearlings for shearing. That was made into baby's undergarments, baby blankets, things like that that are going to really be soft on, on tender skin. And then your, your uh, older wool, your older sheep, are going to have like a suit of clothes, uh, a, nice, a nice woolen suit that you'd go to Sunday, go to meeting in, things like that. But during the war itself, both sides needed all that wool they can get to make those uniforms. So we're just pulling it all in, carting it, it spinning in. it, and getting it sent out where it needs to go. Correct. Exactly. And then after the war, do we go back to using the grades? Yes. Okay. Yep, we do. And as I said, the, the virgin merino wool is the softest wool you can get. And, and the, the merino wool is softer, but it, it gets a little more wiry with the age of the sheep and how many times you shear them. You talked for a second there about virgin merino wool. All right, so it says, I've heard a term virgin wool. What are we talking about? Virgin wool is the first wool that is off a lamb. So a lamb is born in the spring and it keeps all its wool until it's a year old the following year and then it's its first shearing. So that's the softest wool that that sheep is ever going to produce in its life. And incidentally that lamb changes its name in the life of a sheep at that point, right? And that turns it into a yearling then. And then we go to two-year-olds and then after that we go to age sheep. 
And now how old, were, how long will you harvest wool off a of sheep for? As long as they'll produce it. And they produce it every year. They might start getting a little bit older. The ewes will produce roughly 12 to 20 pounds. The rams will produce anywhere from 20 to 25 to 30 pounds. And the weathers, which are castrated rams, they have nothing else to do but produce wool. So the moms produce less because they're coming into season, they're producing the lamb, and then they're producing milk for that lamb. So their body's using the energy to do something else. Exactly, exactly. And something else we need them to do on a farm. Exactly. Great. We need to keep reproducing those lambs. Now, if I'm farming in the 1860s, can I get dual use out of these sheep? You can. They are they are a good meat producer. Um, they they're not as big as the sheep's call like like your Suffolk's or your Hampshires, things like that. Your Oxfords that are specifically for meat breeds, but they do produce a nice a, a nice sized lamb. There's going to be around an 80 to 100. 20 pound lamb, um, which is all right, but when you get into those bigger sheep, you're looking at 140 to 180 pounders. Wow, okay, that's a good chunk different, but this animal could be dual use, it you say? dual use, yep. Okay, great. Well, talk to me a little bit about wool in our era in the 1860s, if you can. The price of wool was at its height in the 1860s because of the Civil War. Both sides had wool in uniforms, so they had to keep them supplied. And so it was up around a dollar and a quarter a pound at that time. We didn't, when I was a kid in the 1990s, sell wool for a dollar and a quarter a pound. Nope. And common wool right now is only about 28 cents a pound. Wow. And when you say this is today's prices, I'll run the calculations and you'll see a number here on the bottom of the screen running what that wool price for the Civil War would be worth today. It's a lot more than that 28 cents a pound we can get now. Exactly. Exactly. And now merino wool is actually coming back again with the home spinners and things like that. So the price when I checked it last Friday when we started shearing our sheep was actually $1.82 a pound. Okay, but that's today's that's dollars. That's today's dollars. And a dollar thirty then is going to be worth a lot more if you account for inflation exactly. all the way through. Exactly. Well, fantastic. Well, you've got a dual use animal and some really pretty animals, but they're really wrinkly. They are really wrinkly. And we've taken, why have we taken that out of sheep today? We've taken that out of the sheep because we use electric clippers now. And it's very hard to navigate those wrinkles with the electric clippers. So what they've done is they've bred those wrinkles out. But here at Firestone Farm, we've spent the last 35 years breeding them back in. So with a lot of selective breeding, a lot of back breeding, and a lot of inbreeding, we've bred those wrinkles back in. Okay, we well used a term there. Selective breeding, that's something any farmer is going to do. He's going to pick his best and try to put the best ram with the best ewe. Correct. Inbreeding, well, any of us who've told the joke is going to know what that is. Exactly. What is back breeding? Back breeding is taking, basically your selective breeding also, is, is taking your, your most wrinkly ram and breeding it to your most wrinkly ewe. So in our case, are there breed standards from the Civil War and, and the surrounding time that you can work toward? Yes, there, uh, and, and when I do say back breeding, so today's modern ones were, are, were bred to be slick and not so wrinkly. So we're back breeding them in to get those wrinkles back in. Wow. And so that's what I meant by back breeding. And this doesn't go very fast if you've been doing it for 35 years. No, it, it's, a, it's a long process and we're, we're really starting to get some wrinkly ones. Well, as you've been back breeding, do you have sort of a common age? There's a term in farms called a cull, obviously, which is where you'll start to pull that animal out of the flock for whatever purpose. Is there an age where you're pretty used to starting to think about culling? Usually eight to 10 years old, but it depends. Like at the ewes, sometimes they have a really bad udder. Uh, sometimes they don't produce a lot of lambs. Um, so, you know, it, it depends on the, the actual individual sheep as to when we'll call that. Um, the, the weathers, we like to get rid of them so they're still a good market lamb, a good market sheep for mutton, and um, they'll, they'll go anywhere from 7 to, to 10 years old. Well, Steve, thanks for spending your time with us, and thank you for spending your time with us here at Civil War Digital Digest. We hope this gave you another small connection to life on a farm during the Civil War. We want to say thanks to the Henry Ford for hosting us today. We'll see you in a couple of days.